Welcome to the introduction module of this program called Retirement 2.0 Advisor Tools. If we get straight into some of the benefits for you for completing this program, first of all, you get to add a new kind of non-financial value to your existing clients. Towards the end of the program, we're going to share some marketing tools to help you learn how to use the Retirement 2.0 concept to win new clients. You'll gain CPD points and hours. And through the process of completing the program yourself, you will experience some kind of personal growth in your own life. Very quick background on myself. I worked in advertising at the start of my career. And for over 20 years, I've been a learning consultant, which essentially means that I build and teach learning programs to help people through a range of different life phases, predominantly focused on sort of leadership and culture and self-development for about 20 years. And then in 2019, I built a program for a client over in Europe to help people transition into retirement. And since then, I've turned it into a business called Retire on Purpose. And that's what I'm going to tell you all about today. Worked with small businesses, you know, people with a startup idea and small kind of accounting firms and advisors right through to large global multinationals. Now, as a financial advisor, you might be saying here going, well, I do some of this as well. Um, are you sort of, what, what are you actually doing here? And the key thing to say is that I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have an AFSL license. I have no intention of becoming a financial advisor. The work that I do takes care of other sides of people's transition and then their retirement experience. So um, the description I use is a bit like if your financial advice is the main, main meal, uh, the, the main menu, then really what we're offering is some vitamins which act like a supplement, if you like, to your excellent financial advice. So as a collaboration potential, um, there's no risk of us working together. And that's a probably really important thing to say. So let's delve right into the history of retirement. Let's look at it on a timeline. The first time people started getting paid any kind of pension was in Germany. Uh, the Chancellor at the time in 1889, a guy called Otto von Bismarck, started paying people a pension after they'd finished work. It was a really big kind of social initiative that was part of his um, lasting legacy. That started to move around the world. And in Australia, in 1909, so 20 years later, we started to do the same thing. We're still on sterling back then, the British pound. And so people got uh, £26 a year. Now, the interesting thing to say is that when this concept of retirement and having some kind of income for the rest of your life started, the average lifespan of an Australian back then was 54.1 years. In 1946, a big thing happened after World War II. It's the beginning of the baby boom. By 1980... What you'll see there is the lifespan had gone up to 74.3 years. In 91, we began the compulsory superannuation scheme being played by employers. And then those baby boomers in 2010, they started retiring. Very different human beings to the kind of people that uh, were retiring in sort of 1909. You may have noticed a small thing that influenced our lives a couple of years ago called the pandemic. Um, big sort of thing that happened out of that was people started to question their life priorities. So fast forward to today, 2024. The average lifespan of an Australian is 83.2 years. It's a very brief history of uh, retirement. Now, the relevance of this slide is here. If you take a look at the difference in lifespan between 1909 and 2024, we've got almost 30 years difference. So there's a very, very big difference between somebody who's thinking about planning a retirement that lasts, you know, maybe two to five years after they finish work versus 20 to 30 years. Interestingly, though, our ideas haven't really evolved a lot. Maybe on the financial side they have, but on the non-financial side, we're still um, telling a story that was created over 100 years ago. And that leads us on to the definition of what we call the retirement 1.0 problem. So when retirement was kind of invented and this concept uh, of having a bit of time after work, um, life conditions were a particular way and they're very, very different today. So let's go into it. Four different elements feed into the retirement 1.0 problem. The first is the current narrative. What are we telling? What is the story that we currently have in the media and in our belief systems? 
The next is mental health. The third is an aging population. And the fourth is what I call solitary experts. So point number one, the current narrative about how to enjoy great retirement was invented over a hundred years ago. What we really need to do collectively as a group of people that are working in this space and helping people in this transition in life is to upgrade the story. So what is the story? Well, let's take a look at the current narrative. It's relatively simple. We're going to call it retirement 1.0. Starts in a person's career, which lasts approximately 40 years or 80,000 hours. And there's a focus during the work period to save and invest for retirement. Then one day you retire on a Friday night, usually. Have some drinks with your colleagues, have some fun, and get out of bed on Monday morning to commence this completely new phase of life and have a 20 to 30 year holiday. The other key part of the narrative is the focus that we have is currently an economic focus. The primary focus is uh, built on a simple belief system that essentially says, if you have enough money to retire on, then you have a great retirement. And we come on to this very soon, the challenges around this. Point number two is mental health. 43% of people who were interviewed in a survey said that retirement of all the transitions they went through in life was the hardest one they had to navigate. There's a whole range of mental health issues that we're going to go into. And in simple terms, we need to do this better. We need to do a better job of actually helping and supporting people through this. Very simple question for you as a financial advisor. You work in the space, you're an expert in this field. Do you know any clients or friends or relatives who have retired with enough money to live on for 20 to 30 years who have experienced one of these challenges? Loss of purpose, loneliness, boredom or depression? Pretty much everybody asked this question to says yes and then they start telling this story about someone they know. What tends to happen in this situation where someone's mental health is not as strong as it could be is they start trying to draw in energy from the outside, from their family and from their wider community. And so they end up being a drain and there's all kinds of challenges that feed off from this. Uh, people's spousal relationships, family relationships, and then just the individual sense of self-esteem and how they feel about themselves. The third part of the problem is what we can call an aging population. Our demographics are changing. No one's really talking about the impact this is going to have, but what we need to do is to get really clear about what's actually going on. Globally, every year 58 million people turn 60. That's two people every second that are thinking about retirement. In Australia, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics Aging Population Report that was launched a few years ago, by 2031, nearly one in three Australians will be of retirement age. That's huge when you stop and think about that in terms of a demographic influencing our society and then link that together with mental health and say, if we have strong, healthy, mentally healthy retirees, it's great for um, our country. If we have a bunch of people that aren't overly happy and are feeling challenged in life, well, if you put two and two together, you can start to see some of the impact of these things. Greater number of retired people, in simple terms, if we don't support them in the non-financial areas, is going to put an increased strain on community. And then the fourth part is what I call solitary experts. No one single expert has the retirement answers for everything. Really what retirees need is a connected support team, rather than just going to sort of solitary individuals. And we need to do some work in this space. So it's complex. There's a great uh, tool here that I got from a, a great ebook from a university in Australia called the Retirement Ecosystem. What you can see here is it's complex. There's all kinds of things that are going to influence an individual. They're looking for help. And each expert in their field is going to give them one piece of the jigsaw puzzle. But nobody has all of the jigsaw pieces. The interesting thing is if we take a look at it, where is the current focus? Where is it easiest for people to get help? Very easy for an individual to find either a doctor to help them with their health or a financial advisor to help them during retirement years to financially plan. If you look at these other areas of life, which are also important, less focus is given to them. What we need to do is to start adding extra jigsaw pieces into the puzzle. So now let's delve into the retirement 2.0 solution and look at our four different elements. 
The first is we need a new narrative. The second is that we can overcome some of the mental health challenges by providing what we call a holistic retirement education. Now, whereas we can't change the aging population, what we can do is start to help people have a sense of purpose for those 20 to 30 years of their life where they will not be working in their full-time career anymore. And the fourth element is we've got a bunch of experts. How about we start to collaborate together? So to bring all this together into a simple statement, through collaboration and a new type of holistic education, we can improve the mental health of retirees by teaching people how to retire with purpose. Let's go into a little bit more detail. So a new narrative. If a big part of the existing narrative is if you have enough money to live on, you'll have a great retirement. What we need to do is upgrade that to say money is very, very important. If you don't have it, you have a significant problem on your hands. However, it's one part of the equation. And what we need to do is to create a holistic understanding of all the different areas that people need to think about to enjoy their retirement experience. And you can see them here, which forms part of our program we'll talk about soon. Six different areas, purpose, sense of career and work, the financial side, which is obviously your core business, relationships, health, and their personal life. Moves on to the second point of offering a holistic retirement education to help people learn how to plan and then navigate through their life, looking at it through that holistic lens. If we continue on with this, life's a journey. We've heard this many times before. And there's different stages of that journey. Typically what happens is when someone's in a current life stage, they then approach or reach some kind of life event. And that life event creates a fork in the road and they enter into a transition phase in between the current stage of life and then the new stage of life. And what you'll notice is the bend in the road requires some different driving. Typically people, when they're in a transition phase, have to slow down, they have to think a lot more about driving, they have to change gears, there's more risk involved. And the sense of kind of just being on this straight, open, cruisy road, it changes completely until they transition fully into their new life stage. If we look at that in a bit more depth, life stage uh, life events can be voluntary, as in they choose, or involuntary. Sometimes retirement is forced upon people. Stress always increases. And whereas you can't completely remove that, certainly by having some sense of a plan, it's going to help people tremendously. Let's look at this transition on a map. On the vertical axis, we've got someone's experience being either positive and healthy and happy or negative. We have the passage of time along the, the horizontal and shifting from career into retirement. What you'll see is the dip, it gets worse before it gets better. Always goes down before it goes back up again. Many people live in denial for a long period of time. They don't want the career to end. They find it hard to accept. Um, and then they move into the next phase where they begin the transition and they feel a sense of frustration. That frustration can easily turn into depression and bigger mental health challenges. Not for everybody, but for a lot. And until the individual reaches what we call the point of acceptance, all of their energy is kind of consumed by worry, fear, concerns, depression, and a whole bunch of mental health challenges. When an individual accepts that they are moving into a new stage of life, um, that is when all the energy gets freed up and it enables them to begin exploring new possibilities. Once they've gone through an exploration phase for a period of time, they then integrate into that new stage of life. Now, classically, retirement has been this very sort of black and white. You're either working or you're not working. There's a lot of different models. We can call that fully retired. There's people that retire from full-time employment and do similar work as a consultant and set up a small business. Unretired is where you return back to work. And then semi-retired is some kind of hybrid between the two. So a lot of different possibilities and options that are available for people. When I built the program in 2019, I used a great body of work on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I overlaid five different elements of each of these needs onto the retirement experience. I'm going to talk you through them, and this is really where the holistic thing comes to life. The first is physical health. An individual could have $5 million in their investment fund and their strategy across super and investments and have more than enough money to live on and have terrible, terrible physical health. 
the quality of their retirement experience would be you know not great this is your sector this is the place where a lot of the conversation happens at the moment financial security i'm not going to talk too much about this because this is what you do as your day job level three really important relationships and community if an individual has gained all of their sense of community from the workplace when they leave and they no longer have those friends around they're going to feel incredibly lonely this is a, a very very big challenge um, that if not managed effectively can cause all manner of issues level four is learning and growth again if an individual has gained all of their sense of stretch and their challenge and their learning in their mind and their brain through their work and then that ends one day that they're at a loss of what to do because they're not being stretched anymore and finally purpose is having a reason to get out of bed in the morning having a sense of i'm serving something bigger than myself whether that's a group of people whether it's an organization whether it's a charity whether it's the environment animals um, technology this kind of thing when we have a sense of purpose we put energy into it and we get energy back from it when if all of that comes from work then it's a problem for people now purpose is not your job it's something that's deeper than your job it's not a job description it's a sense of meaning and value that you contribute to the world and there's many ways of finding purpose beyond work huge amounts but we haven't really had this dialogue so far we've had a you know an understanding of it being this holiday um, which most people get really bored of so a big part of the work that we're doing is actually adding new elements into the retirement education um, by helping people figure out what their purpose is for the next phase of life they can overcome a huge amount of these mental health issues very easily and what you're going to find is whereas we can't change the aging population because that is just happening if we have um, a large number of our retirees with a strong sense of self a positive sort of mental health energy and having some sense of purpose they can contribute both to their immediate family and then the wider community and i don't know about you but that's the kind of country that i want to be a part of where we we really value our older community and we don't just kind of go well work's finished you have this decade now in, in between sort of the end of work and maybe needing to look at aged care where it's just kind of forgotten about and not really talked about. I think we need to get the dialogue, you know, much richer and brighter um, and, and whatnot. So uh, I see financial advisors being a really big part in this. I also see councils being a big part in it um, and everybody just getting involved to spread the awareness of this. So uh, coming on to the fourth point of collaboration, we can't do this alone. I've built a learning program, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, everybody's doing their bit. Councils, I believe, need to get involved. The finance sector in terms of advisors, maybe life insurance, some of these interesting sort of uh, fintech organizations. Health plays a part in it. The media does too. Uh, we've got some great coverage sort of on Westpac Wire, um, all kinds of sort of uh, blog articles and um, starting to get quite a few interesting things happening on uh, podcasts as well. Um, I would call myself a retirement coach. I'm looking at training up more people like myself and then obviously willing retirees. It's going to take a team effort. And so in simple terms, if you look at the expertise each individual can provide from your perspective in terms of a finance expert, uh, you can help people create a wealthy retirement. If we add another element into that equation and call it life advice or holistic advice with the intent of helping people look at those non-financial sides, we can create um, a double whammy wealthy retirement with purposeful retirees um, which is going to be great for individuals so the way this program works is you have the learning videos you're watching at the moment you also have a workbook called retirement 2.0 advisor tools and it works through each of the, the lessons that you're watching the videos for uh, provides a little bit of background information and then towards the end of each lesson area you'll see a self-reflection area that has uh, questions to help you think about what you've learned and also in some cases some actions to take uh, in order to implement the learning and apply yourself so uh, you'll see here on page six this is the one for lesson one uh, simply four different questions you can think about so the next lesson coming up is called retirement 2.0 tools